I'm Brad Rodriguez, and today I'm gonna to show you some beginner mistakes I made on the lathe while turning this bottle opener out of Black Palm. And let me just tell you, Black Palm is a major pain in the This is day three of my six days of beginner wood turning video series. I'm launching a new video each day of a turning project any beginner can make. And this is my first time making most of these projects, so you'll see some mistakes I made and things that I learned. I'll have a link in the description to the playlist for all six videos so you can check out the whole series. Now let's get turning. Today I'm working with a very different wood called black palm. It's neither a hardwood or softwood, but a monocot like a grass or bamboo. I read that on Wood Database. The plank is also a bit smaller than the other ones I've been using. This is one and a half by one and a half versus the two by two inch blanks that I was using in earlier days. And this also was a challenge since the stock insert jaws on my chuck only go down to one and three quarters of an inch. So I had to mount the piece by clamping the diagonal corners in the chuck versus turning the piece down to a cylinder like I did in day one and day two. Now a better option would have been to change out my jaw insert to a smaller one. I plan on picking one of those up in the future, I just didn't have one. The hardware for the bottle opener is similar to the ice cream scoop from day two, just a long 3 8 of an inch threaded shaft. So I chucked up a bit in the tailstock and drilled out a hole for tapping the mandrel that I'll be using once again. Oh, and this is me faking that I'm drilling because I didn't hit record when I really did it. Seriously, this project was just doomed from the get-go. I removed the midi chuck from the lathe and then I mounted the drive spur in the live center to start roughing the blank. And I could tell from the get-go that this black palm was a very different wood. It splintered and just chipped out like crazy and it produced a lot of finer dust versus larger chips like that wonderful red heart from day two. I would have taken a lot more off the blank if I didn't know what was in store for me next, but I just blissfully moved on and I switched out the drive spur for the drill chuck and the 3 8 of an inch mandrel like I did with the bottle stopper. I started at the business end of the bottle opener and I was just using the round tool to put a nice sweep that would go into the hardware. And this is where the cutting started getting worse. Not only was it chattering and dusty, but the blank was actually starting to catch and stall if I tried to take too deep of a cut. I hadn't really figured out what was going on, but if you look closely, you can see that the drill chuck was actually free spinning in the headstock. Let's watch that again in slow motion. And look at the threaded headstock keep spinning when the blank stalls. I pressed forward taking lighter and lighter cuts and still getting some slow down and stalling. And then I just decided to call it good and start parting off the excess of the back of the handle. Well, that made the stalling even worse and you can hear the drill chuck squealing in the headstock. It finally dawned on me that I needed some more pressure from the tailstock to keep that drill chuck in the headstock nice and firm. So I cranked it down a bit to try to help things out, but really this only made things worse, which I would realize in just a minute. But before that, here's a sneak peek of day four's project. I'm switching over from the mandrel and chuck and moving into something a bit smaller. There are a ton of accessories to make pins, but I'll show you how I did it a bit differently than most. Make sure you check the description or the end of the video for a link to the six days of beginner wood turning playlist. All right, so back to this disaster that was unfolding on my lathe. I stopped the lathe and you may have already seen it when the blank was stalling, but there was a massive split right at the end of the blank. Now, frankly, I am lucky this thing didn't just explode on me while it was turning. Because the palm wood is so fibrous, it's prone to splitting and there's no shoulder on my live center. So as I cranked it down, it just split it right in two. Here's the difference between this live center that I was using and the stock live center. The stock one has a point, but it's also surrounded by a larger ring that's set back a bit. Now the aftermarket one I have is just conical the whole way. If I had have used the stock live center with the shoulder, then this probably wouldn't have happened because it would have stopped pushing into the end grain. Also the headstock and the drill chuck were clearly an issue as well, since it was spinning and stalling. I've since found out that there's this thing called a draw bar or a draw bolt that you can thread into the drill chuck to hold it firmly into the headstock. So here's my drill chuck. It's got a 2MT Morse taper on it and that fits into the headstock or the tailstock. And it's also got a chuck key to lock the mandrels and drill bits. 
But that's all that's keeping the chuck into the headstock is just pressure and friction of this taper. So if you look at the back of it, it doesn't have any female threads on the end. The drill chuck that I linked to in the description has quarter 20 threads on the end of it. So you can use a bolt through the headstock, just like I'm pushing through this ejector tool. You can thread that into the drill chuck and then use a large washer or knob to pull the chuck tight into the headstock. Now I have a link below in the video showing this technique. If I had one, it would have kept the drill chuck from spinning freely and stalling the blank out. Now those were the lessons I learned after the fact. In the moment, I just cut my losses, literally. I sawed off the excess of the blank and then I smoothed the end with a sander. I went through the same finishing step as the previous days, I didn't video it, but then I installed the bottle opener hardware and it was done. For all the hassle, this thing turned out really nice. And that end grain, though a pain in the neck, looks beautiful on the handle. I hope you can take some of these mistakes and lessons I learned and apply them to your own turning. I want to give a big thank you to Jet Woodworking for sponsoring today's video. There's a link down below in the description. You can see the Jet 1221 variable speed lathe and find out all the information about it. It's an awesome machine. So that's a wrap on day three. We're halfway through the six days of beginner wood turning projects. There's a playlist right here. It'll take you to all the different projects that are out there. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.